Hi, in this video I'll show you the integration of Active Directory and then show you how Active Directory accounts can be used with various software blades. So the blades you can integrate AD accounts with are the Identity and Awareness Blade, um, Mobile VPN Blade, Data Loss Prevention, Application and URL Filtering and Antibot and Antivirus. Uh, there's actually one more area you can integrate AD with and that's with uh, IP set clients so I'll show you that as well. So the first thing I'd like to do is show you my Active Directory environment and if we just log in here and if we go to the contractors organizational unit here there's a couple of contractors in here C1 and C2 if we right click, go to properties, and have a look at the members of and the members of contractors uh, security group. I've also got some computers in here, so some various computers. And if we right click, then go to properties tab, they are members of the IT security group, this one here. Okay, so if we cancel that and go to the smart dashboard console and as you can see this is uh, the latest version of today so it's R75.45 and the first thing we'll do in here is create the active directory integration so if we go to the firewall tab go to servers and opsec applications right click new LDAP account unit and give it a name. So we'll give it LDAP service. Specify the profile which should be Microsoft AD and give it the domain name you're connecting to. Click on Active Directory Query so it can query the Active Directory and then click on Servers. So here we will add our LDAP server so click on Add we need to specify a host so we haven't got one it's just got the gateway host in here so we'll create a new one from here so all we need to do here is specify a name I'll call it AD for Active Directory and give it the IP address of your Active Directory server okay so 10.10.20.25 is my Active Directory server click on OK here and then specify a username it will use to connect it with so I'm using administrator uh, you may use a, a more restricted user account uh, then you can specify your login DN and mine is CN equals administrator CN equals users DC equals JAFSEC and DC equals com. Specify the password of this uh, account. And click on OK here. Okay, so that's uh, appeared here. If you go to object, ma uh, object management or objects management and click fetch branches, uh, we can see it's appeared here as well. And you can add it or edit it from here as well. Uh, so OK, that's done. So if we click on OK here, and if we go to Users, we can see our LDAP service created here. So if we double click it, this will test if we can connect to it or not, and it's connected fine. Otherwise, you'd get a bind error or some sort of error appear in a dialog on the main screen here. So if we just double click that, we can see all our Active Directory objects in here. At the very bottom you can see the contractors and you can see them here, C1 and C2. If we go to um, right to the top we'll just um, minimize this. So this is, this is actually done this part. So the next part is uh, to show you how user accounts appear in the different software blades. So uh, different areas amongst uh, this top section here. So the first one is the identity awareness, so that's done within the firewall blade or firewall tab. 
So if we go to rules, add rule and add one at the top. And if we click on source, so historically you can only specify network objects uh, and use IP addresses, but now we can do add user access rule. If we click on this and um, specify, um, hit the users tab, and then we can specify this tick box here, which is specific users groups. And if we click plus here, we should see our user accounts. So we can see them here. Uh, it's, and also you could uh, specify uh, security groups as well, so we can see our contract a security group here. So you may want to just say, for example, double click and use the contractors uh, security group. Give it a name, contractors. Click OK. And um, you can just specify the rest of the rule as uh, required, uh, depending on what your requirements are. So you may want to do something like um, um, drop contractors from a specific destination, and then you'd specify a destination in here. Okay, so that's the first area. Um, the second blade we'll look at is the mobile VPN. So that's this tab here. If we go to policies in here, create a new rule. You've got all uh, users in here by default, but if you right click it, add you and click on add users. Again, we can see contractor C1, C2, and contractors user group. So um, just double click any of them. For example, uh, contractor one is allowed specific applications, and you can add applications from here. There isn't any because we haven't created any. And you create applications from here in the mobile VPN blade. And then you can specify what you'd like to install it upon and then specify a comment. And so when the C1 contractor uh, logs in, uh, opens up the portal, he or she can log in with their account credentials and access the applications within here. The next area is DLP. So if we go to the DLP tab, which is uh, here, data loss prevention. And we're already in the policy section. So if we add a rule um, and pick a data type, let's go for, um, let's say, credit card information. Okay, so let's just click this one. Credit card numbers or bank accounts and click OK. And you can specify your objects again from here. Um, you may want to specify a group, for example. So any contractors, if they belong to the contractors group, um, you may say the destination is outside or my organization or even anywhere. So if you add objects from here, um, you can specify any. So anything crossing the firewall with credit card numbers. Um, action detect, or you could specify inform the user or ask the user for a reason or prevent. Um, and track it and log it. You can specify the... Um, the severity, low, medium, high, critical. Uh, you can schedule it for a specific time. If you go across, there's some more options here. So the main objective is we can use um, Active Directory user accounts in here as well. So for in this example, it's um, anyone within the contractors users group sending credit card numbers, uh, detect it and log it. Okay, so also if we scroll to the right hand side, we can see a category section. And within this section, for reporting purposes, we can categorize this rule. So we'll categorize it as compliance. And also below, you can see lots of predefined rules. Uh, these are put in place by a checkpoint, and the action is to detect. So it's not going to prevent anything. Uh, so you can leave them on. Uh, and see what your checkpoint firewall detects for these rules or you can delete them as uh, required.
So the next section we look at is the application and URL filtering. So if we click on the tab, and within the policy section here we can add a rule. Let's name the rule block Facebook. Click OK and specify a source. Within the access row, within here, we can also click show 50 more records, so it will show you more records within your Active Directory server. So for example, I've also got staff's uh, security group here, as well as staff organizational unit. Uh, we'll scroll back to the top and use Contractor 1, for example. Give it a name. Contractor 1. Click OK. So contractor one is in our source now. Destination is internet. We can change this, but internet is fine. And then specify applications sites. Uh, you can add application sites, add category, or create new ones from here. So we will go for the add application sites and type Facebook. And then you can specify, click them all from here. So Facebook apps as well as uh, the categories. There's quite a few. We'll select them all. And once done, you can click OK. Also, you can switch between the tabs here as well. Categories, just to look at the categories. You can click back or create your custom ones from here as well. OK, that's done. So you can see them all appear here. And the action is to block and send a block message. Uh, the tracking is to log it and you can decide which gateways you'd want to install this on. And you can give it a time as well so you can block it within work hours for example. So our objective again is to see how uh, users are integrated within application URL filtering from Active Directory. So the next section is anti-bot and antivirus so we'll click on this section here go to the policy section and we can create rules here so you'd create rules for your organization to block uh, bots and viruses um, but for this example we'll use uh, an FTP server and the reason why I want to show you this example is to see how uh, we can integrate with Active Directory computer accounts this time not user accounts so computer accounts so if we go to add rule, name it FTP server, and the protected scope will be the FTP server. So if we right click, add user access role, this time we're going to click this tab, machines. And if we click here, click plus, we can find the machine in here. The FTP server, you can click on 50 to show 50 more records and scroll through. Or the easier way would be just to go on the right hand side here, you can see some more options. And the last one is show computers, so it will only show you your computer objects. So here's my FTP server. If I click that, and I've got it selected here. So let's name it FTP server. Click OK. And there you go. So you could um, give it you know, a specific protection, uh, an action, a specific recommended profile. You'd create all these here. But we'd save this for another video and I'll show you uh, the uh, antibot and antivirus and application URL filter, how it all works and how, what all these sections are here. But for now, um, we can see that it's tracking, logging and doing, it, doing a packet capture. You can specify the gateways you would like to install this on. And the objective again is on this one is uh, we've integrated it this time with a computer account from Active Directory. The last section I'd like to cover with you is the remote access VPN uh, community. So how Active Directory integrates with um, remote access uh, VPN for remote users. So if we go to the firewall tab here, there's a remote access VPN community that is uh, predefined. We can also go to IPsec VPN here. 
to access the same area. So we've got this community here, it's already predefined, or we can create new ones by right clicking new community. Um, so if we double click here, we've got participant user groups. So if we click on this section, go to new, select LDAP group, give it a name, LDAP remote uh, VPN and specify our account unit. So we created this early in the video, which is the LDAP service uh, Active Directory account unit. So click that, and then we can specify our group scope. Um, we can specify, for example, um, OU equals contractors. So this will apply to all the contractors. Uh, CN equals users. Okay, so click on OK and that's done. So you've integrated Active Directory uh, contractors group with this remote access community. So it means contractors can now log in via the checkpoint gateway to access the resources within the network. Click OK here and you're done. So um, in this video, we've uh, looked at how Active Directory can be used um, within the various software blades. Uh, within the checkpoint firewall and how you would integrate user accounts and computer accounts uh, within the software blade so if you've got one or more of these blades and you're using them within your environment it's uh, a very useful feature to integrate active directory into the checkpoint firewall um, okay so that's it from me and i'd like to thank you for watching thank you